Well, greetings and salutations, test takers. This is Dean Tenney coming to you from my studio in fabulous Las Vegas. Just got through with our live uh, overtime session uh, that we do some Tuesdays, not every Tuesday. But uh, this came up in our little Zoom overtime session. And it's such a good question that uh, somebody brought it up and we did it there. But I also wanted to share it uh, with the rest of you. Uh, the best free supplementary paid study materials is my YouTube channel. But if you don't have a Kaplan Q Bank, I highly recommend it as a paid supplement. Uh, you can get it for about 60 bucks with my Guru 10 discount code. And for that commercial, Kaplan allows me to give free looks on great questions like this. This is very similar to a question you're going to encounter on not only the SIE, the Series 7, the 65, the 66. I'll put it in every playlist. Now, what's great about suitability questions like this, very uh, rarely do we get to do some math to figure out what the right answer is in terms of suitability. Usually those are tough kind of judgment questions. All right, let's get busy on uh, this question. A client is trying to decide between, so that's important. So that means we're going to get two investments and we got to decide which one is most suitable. Uh, a bond carrying a coupon of six and a quarter. So it's a bond carrying a coupon. It's a corporate bond. So let's just put that here. So that's going to be six and a quarter. And we should know that that's going to be a taxable yield. Okay, so let's put that there. And let's going to put in a little bigger font. And let's put it in a different color. Okay. And a par value municipal bond that has a coupon of four and three quarters. So let's put that there. And that four and three quarters, we should know, is going to be a tax-free yield. And so, boom. So now we got to decide. It says, assuming all other factors are equal, which are never is never true except in Series 7 Fantasyland. I joke, after you pass this uh, test, you get to leave Series 7 Fantasyland. I'm stuck here permanently. No wonder I'm demented. Right? So... <laughs> And your client's in a 28% marginal income tax bracket. By the way, that is a huge key pivot, uh, you know, trigger word for us on the test because the minute I hear the tax bracket, I know that's what's coming next is either I'm going to have to calculate tax-free equivalent yield or taxable equivalent yield. And whether I'm going to multiply or divide, I know that what I'm going to have to do is take 100% or one, doesn't matter how you want to think about it. I like to think of it as a dollar or a hundred cents, whatever, you know, kind of floats your boat here. But I'm gonna take 100% minus the customer's tax bracket, which in this case is 28%. So on both versions of this, I'm gonna to need to be able to do that. Now, the way I think about it, the way Dean thinks about it is not testable. But I think about it, if I have 100 cents or $1 and the US government confiscates 28 cents of every dollar, 28% of my money, I'm joking, it's not confiscation, but it's, it's taxes. It's not a voluntary contribution I'm making. What I'm left uh, with take home is 72 cents of every dollar in my tax bracket. So I'm gonna need that regardless of what's going on. So uh, there's two ways to proceed here. One way I can proceed is to come up with the tax-free equivalent yield. Let me get a smaller font there. And the other way I could proceed is to come up with the taxable equivalent yield. I'll show you both because both of them could be uh, testable. So uh, I'm either gonna multiply or divide. I'm either gonna multiply or divide. So if I'm going from the taxable yield to the tax-free, I'm gonna multiply. And I'm gonna multiply by 0.72. I say, well, in your tax bracket, when you are getting six and a quarter, you're only keeping 72% of that, 72 cents of every dollar. And so in your tax bracket, getting six and a quarter, and I'm just gonna get my calculator, 
what your take home pay is gonna be is four and a half percent. That is the tax free equivalent yield. Now that's helpful now because now when I look at that, I say, okay, well, let's just put that there. I say, okay, now I'm just going to compare that. I say, okay, well, I have a muni that pays four and three quarters. And so four and three quarters, I don't pay taxes. So it looks like the muni is the better deal, right? Because uh, six and a quarter after paying taxes leaves me with four and a half and four and three quarters not paying taxes is a bigger number. So that's one way to proceed. Now, the other way I could have proceeded is to say, okay, well, what is four and three quarters like without paying taxes? And so what I could have done is gone to the taxable equivalent yield. If I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna divide. So I'm either multiplying or dividing depending on what I'm doing. And let's put that, boom. So to go the other way, we're going to divide. And we're gonna divide by that 0.72. So when we divide by 0.72, and then we're going to get what's called the taxable equivalent yield. So I'm taking my calculator. I'm taking four and three quarters. I'm dividing by 0.72s. And I get 6.6. .6. Yeah, let's make that nice and big. And that... is the taxable equivalent. Yeah, hold on, I got a computer in my way here. Okay, so now we can compare that six and a quarter, right? 6.6 .6 to six and a quarter. And we say, okay, well, 6.6 .6 is better than six and a quarter. Getting a four and three quarters in your tax bracket, Mr. Jones, and not paying taxes is the equivalent of 6.6 .6 and so you should buy the muni. So which bond do you tell the client to buy? We tell the client to buy the muni bond. And we tell them to buy the muni bond because it's taxable equivalent yield is higher than six and a quarter percent, All right? So it's higher than that six and a quarter as we did at 6.6. .6. So hope that was helpful. This is very much uh, something you could see on the test. Uh, you know, I also could uh, say you should buy the muni because the tax-free equivalent of the corporate bond is less. So again, two ways to approach that. I uh, hope you found that helpful. I'll put this in all the playlists because it's very reflective. Remember, inch by inch, your series seven is a cinch. Yard by yard, your series seven is hard. I'll see you for the next explication request.